verse of Scripture has kind of been floating around. You know, Israel was going through a very challenging time, and, and I think indeed we need, I needed to pray this morning and need to continue to pray. But I want to give you some good news about Jerusalem, and it's based upon the authority of the Word of God. If you turn to the 21st chapter of Revelation, hey, brother, I didn't see you there. How are you doing? Uh, I think it's around the 22nd verse, and it says this. This is lots of things have happened. Uh, there's been a new heaven, a new earth. There's a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, and it's just a marvelous place. And there's many things that we could talk about, but that's not the message this morning. And the thing is that it, what it says is that in this new Jerusalem, that there is no temple. There is not a temple. We hear a lot of talk today about the third temple being built, and I, I believe it's going to be built. Uh, it's going to happen. God is going to have His way, and, and He's going to succeed. It's going to happen just the way that He declared and purposed for it to be. But in this new city called Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, uh, there is no temple, but it says there is a throne. And it is the throne of the Father and of the Lamb. And it goes on and says that there is no need for a sun or a moon or any, or any other light, but rather that the glory of God is the light of this Jerusalem. And then he finishes up with something just fantastic that we sang about this morning. And it says that the Father is the glory, but that Jesus is the lamp. Give Him praise for that. He is the glory of God. Jesus is. Oh, you can do better than that. It has to be good. Amen. Amen. God, we're in a challenging world, but we're not in a world where we ought to be discouraged. We're not in a world that we ought to be afraid. But we're in a world that we are the witnesses that Jesus Christ is resurrected. He is the Son of God. He went away, but He's coming back. You believe that? I believe that. Now, this morning we want to talk about just for a few minutes, how important is it to know the truth? Now, there's a passage in, in Isaiah, and that's not not the message this morning, but it, it talks about it, and it says this about truth. It said there, there were these terrible times, things going on that were unfathomable to those of us who, who walk according to the, the Spirit of God in our life. Just a, a horrible time, and it says this about truth. Truth has fallen in the streets, and we need to be careful that we don't back off from the truth of God. The world is rejecting the truth of God. It's doing that. And it will not get better. The world is not going to wake up and have an epiphany and say all of a sudden, oh, gosh, we were all wrong. God was right after all. It, but it won't happen that way. But in Isaiah, the prophet said, truth has fallen in the streets and is being trampled upon. Does that sound like a time that maybe we live in? I mean, there are things going on now, lies, absolute lies that are being presented as truth and throwing truth to the side and walking upon it. How important is it to know the truth? Well, there, there's this true story told about a bind man. There was a, a man flying from Seattle to San Francisco. And about this time, I think our pastor is thinking, I should not have driven. I really should have got on the plane with Michelle and the boys. I'm sure that's true. But pray for him and for his family, of course. But the man was flying from Seattle to San Francisco. The plane had a layover in Sacramento. The flight attendant explained that there would be a delay and if the passengers wanted to, they could get off the aircraft and the plane would be reboarded in about one hour. Well, everybody got off the plane except one gentleman who was blind. Another man had noticed him as he walked by and could tell that the gentleman was blind because he could see the dog, his seeing eye dog, lying beneath the seat quietly through the entire flight. 
He could also tell that this man had flown this flight many times before because the pilot approached him and he said, Keith, uh, we're in Sacramento for about an hour. Would you like to get off and stretch your legs? And Keith answered, no, but my dog would like to. So all the people in the gate area came to a complete standstill when they looked up and saw the pilot walk off the plane with a seeing eye dog (laughs) with sunglasses on. They not only tried to change planes, they tried to change airlines. <laughs> now, Paul, I love you, brother, but if you come out with a, with a dog and sunglasses on, I'm not going with you. Paul, by the way, is a, is a pilot. Wave at us, Paul, so we know who you Okay, he, he, he flies those planes that we look at that go over. You see, they believed that the pilot was blind. It was, it was not true, but they believed it. And their Belief in something that was not the truth caused them to take action and to do things that was completely unnecessary. How important is it to know the truth? How important is it? Well, I I want to comment just a few moments about some things on truth that, that the Lord stirred within my heart. And truth sheds light in the midst of that which is not true and allows us to see things as they really are. Isn't that what we need today? Don't we need to see things as they really are, not as they are presented on the TV or across the radio or even sometimes in conversations? We need to know the truth and see things as they really are. Truth doesn't change. I like this one when the Lord spoke this to me. He said, Larry, truth doesn't change. We just learn, you just learn more about it and how and it does affect you. Truth is a lifelong journey. And as we search for truth, we grow and we mature into the very image of Jesus Christ. You see, we must not spend our lives running from or to what we think is truth unless we have a foundation of truth, a truth that we know that will never change, that any time that we don't know something, we can always go back to that foundation and rest there for a moment and say, Lord, could you just kind of clear this up for me? Could could you help these thoughts that are in my mind, these emotions that are trying to come out of me? I need some place to rest, and I need a foundation of truth to rest on, that, a foundation that never changes. If we do not have that foundation in our lives that we can rely upon and rest in and find shelter in, we will spend our lives always being disappointed, always reaching for something that we can't quite reach, always reacting to what we experience. Oh, Jesus, forgive me, for that has been my life at times in these few 29 years that I've lived upon the earth. (laughs) That's as untrue as the pilot was blind, okay? (laughs) That's just uh, many more years than that. Why is it that we have that experience when we seek something without this foundation of truth never changes. Well, uh, things keep changing. Have you ever worked for something and, and, and you really put forth the energy and the effort and the time and, and the investment, and, and then when you got it, you think, that's what I did this for? It, it just keeps changing. We don't understand it. I feel unprepared. I I seek after this, and I give my life to it, and and I pursue it, and and I get it, and then all of a sudden, I feel as unprepared for my journey as when I first started after this. The other thing is that it's never enough, and it never lasts. When truth is revealed, and I love this morning, Logan, that we're, we're singing about Not that we don't before, but Jesus. I just kept hearing his name in these songs. Because we will find out he is that foundation of truth. He is that resting place in a time of turmoil. That not only places like 
Jerusalem and Israel can rest in if they will but go to Him. But we can. When truth is revealed, that which is not truth is exposed. You see, if we want to be strong, to endure, if we want to know that we know, I mean, one of the most uncomfortable places in, in, in our walk upon this earth is to think we know something and take what we think we know to deal with something that we really know is a challenge. To think that we know, if we, if we want to be fully persuaded, if we want this strong foundation, one that does not need to change. Now, I really, I confess to you that I have built foundations in my life that would not last, did not last. And, and, and I had to discard them like I would wad up a piece of paper and throw them away because they were useless to me, and they cost me a lot. They cost me a lot. We need a foundation that will never change, that is just what we need all the time in any circumstance, any circumstance, any challenge. Always enough. Now, if that's true, and, and it is true for all of us, and it's true for your neighbors, it, it is true for the, your coworkers, they need this as desperately as we do. It is true for those who are seeking after it, and it's true for those who are turning aside from it. That's being the truth. Where do I start? And I thought about this, and, and I thought, well, you know, a good place to start would be the beginning. If I really want to know the foundation that will last forever, one that regardless of any circumstance that comes into my life, any challenge that I face, any failure that I am a part of, I need to find a foundation that will always be there and that will never change. So a good place is to start at the beginning. And one of my favorite uh, passages, and you know what my favorite passage is? is the one that really ministers to my need at the time of my need. That's my favorite one. One that really gives me strength when I feel weak. One that really encourages me when I feel discouraged. That's my favorite scripture. Well, this is one of my favorite scriptures. It's found in the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 5. It says this, In the beginning, now understand that, this beginning is not the beginning of God, for He has no beginning. But it is the beginning of things starting to happen that really involve us, that we as the human race are a part of. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, I'm not trying to, to declare a particular doctrine, and, and, and whole denominations have been set up on, on, on words like this, but I'm just trying to say that, that the Bible is true when it says that in the beginning was the Word. In this particular beginning that we're going to look at briefly this morning, there was the Word, and that Word was with God, and that Word was God. You see, it's not three gods being one. It's one God that is revealed to us as a Father, as a Son, as a Holy Spirit. He was with God, the Word, in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Oh, I need to remember that sometime. I, I need to remember that all things were made by Him. It, it, CNN didn't, didn't make it. Fox News didn't make it either. Okay. It's not what they report that is always the beginning and the foundation of truth that never changes. It may be a truth, but it's a truth that changes. And I won't meddle any more in that. In him was life. And that life was the light of mankind. I thought, how, how marvelous is that? Jesus is this light of all mankind and we read in Revelation 21, I think it's 22, right close to that, that He is the lamp, the lamp. Now, that's a bright light when I look up, and then I can't see you at all. But if you unscrew that bulb, there, there's no light coming forth. 
There not only needs to be the source of the light, but there needs to be that which can reveal the light. And I wish we had time I could talk about we are that light as well. The light shines in darkness. And in Genesis 1, it says that there was this great darkness, and it said, out of the darkness the light shined. Well, that seems backwards to me. I mean, I'd think you'd just not have any darkness, and then poof, here comes the light. But God didn't do it that way. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, understood it, able to hinder it in any way. Now, many things in my life have been hindered. But the one thing in my life that has never been hindered and is a truth that is a foundation that will never change is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. I don't know my problems. I know I've had some. I know I have some. I know I'll face some. But I want to tell you this. There's a foundation in our lives as followers of Christ that we can always run to and we can never go any lower than that foundation. But we can go as high as that foundation is. It is a truth that never changes. thought about this, and I thought, well, I embrace that truth sometimes, but you know what I have the audacity to do sometimes is to take that truth and want to change it because it's uncomfortable at times. It isn't always what I want. It isn't always taking me to where I, I really thought I wanted to go. I had in my heart to go someplace else with this truth, but this truth said, no, don't do that. Well, we have to understand by the grace of God that we cannot change this truth. We can't increase it. We can't diminish it. It is what it is, and it will be for all eternity because Jesus Christ is that foundation, and He does not change. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 11th verse says this, For no one, say that with me, for no one, that includes you. That includes me. No one can lay any foundation other than one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, here's what that says to me. When God began to do these things in this beginning, He laid a foundation that was already laid, needed nothing added to it, nothing taken away, never needed to increase, never, never needed to increase. It was the foundation that we can lay hold of by the grace of God to get through whatever it is we're going to go through. Jesus is that truth that never changes. John, the first chapter, verses 9 through 13, says this. The true light that gives light to everyone. Now, this really just thrills me, amazes me. Even before I received Christ, He had given a light that was available to me. Even when I received that light and stumbled, that light was still there for me. Even to that person who would spit in the face of God, that light is available. The true light that gives light to everyone coming into the world. He was in the world, talking about Jesus, talking about the Word. He was in the world, and though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. I thought about that little thing that I've heard about um, parents and children. Uh, there's a commercial I saw, and, and uh, in this commercial, uh, the child comes walking out of this very nice home, and mom and dad are sitting out in the patio, and he comes up to them, and mom and dad says, you know, son, we need to talk to you. Uh, we're going to have to adjust some things for, for us. We're going to have to change some things. And he said, are, are we in financial trouble? He said, oh, no, 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 your mom and I are great. You're the one we've got to change. 
You're the one that has to make the adjustment. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all, now this is, this is the cool stuff. Yet to all who did receive him, the word, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, to believe in his name is to believe in the relationship that he and the Father have. To believe in his name is to believe in the provisions that are provided through the love of God. To believe in his name is to embrace the salvation that is given because of who he is and what he has done and the foundation he has laid that will never change. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. There have been times when I've had people tell me I had no right to be a child of God because I'd made some mistakes, because I'd stumbled, because I hadn't behaved the way that I really should have. And I came to a place of tears and heartbrokenness of saying, God, I'm sorry. And they got mad because I got up and walked around like I was a son of God and I'd never done anything wrong and I was on a foundation that could not be altered, changed, increased, or decreased. And I felt just as secure as before I stumbled. Well, I want to say to you this morning, if you're being challenged in areas, you may or may not have handled them exactly the way you should, but you've got a right if you receive Christ, if you receive his name, if you embrace him and what he has done, you have a God-given right to step away from your failure and into his success. Verse 13, children born not of natural descent, talking about those who believe in his name, nor of human decision, but born of God. You see, this born again thing that we talk about isn't just so that we can preach about it. It's so that we can live it in the power of the resurrected life of Jesus Christ, that foundation that never changes. We must be born again, not to build a denomination, not to build a church, but to build a life that will last for eternity. John 1, 14, this foundation of truth that never changes was a wonderful thing. But had it stayed in the heart of God and not come to earth in 1943, I would never have known about it. It says this, the Word, that's Jesus, became flesh. Not fleshly, he became flesh. It's incarn God incarnate with God with us. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Now, I tell you what, that is the love of God because I would not have come and, and lived with a bunch of people like us. <laughs> Lord, forgive me, but I've tried to escape some of you. I know you've tried to escape me. But God, because he loves us. He sent His Son in flesh to dwell among us. And the testimony of John, the writer of this gospel, was, we've seen His glory, the glory of the one and only. We've experienced in some measure who He is. We, we've seen the marvelous works that He can do. We've seen the great love that seemed to, to have, have no boundaries but embrace all. We've seen all of that. And the majesty of who this man is, the only begotten Son of God, this foundation that will never change, that cannot be added to or taken away from. And one of the things that I like this, this last part, it said, who came from the Father, Full of grace and truth. You know what grace means. 
I got saved. <laughs> Grace means I've been forgiven. Grace means I can lay hold of things that allow me to be what I'm not capable of being without that grace. And that's true for you as well, isn't it? When he came, he united two things forever that will never be separated. He took grace, the unmerited favor of God, and he took truth, a foundation that can never be changed, can never be added to, can never be taken away from. He took those two together wrapped them up in a package, put a bow on it, and said, here, Larry, it's yours. I remember the night that I took that package. Do you remember your night, your day, your time when that package was there and all you had to do was receive it? You couldn't do anything to get it. You couldn't be good enough to get it. You couldn't be bad enough that he'd withdraw it. It was there. Grace is forever one with truth. Jesus, that never changes. Well, Jesus, I'm sure, was aware that as good as this good news is, we just might have a bit of a struggle trying to lay hold of it and to understand it and to embrace it. Foundation of a truth that never changes, that is always just enough, always at the right time, never fails, always merciful, always forgiving, always tender toward us. Is it any wonder that the Bible says the abundance of the love of God for His people. We may struggle. I've struggled, haven't you? I mean, I, I struggle today. I mean, I, I'd like to stand up here and say, okay, I got there. I'm going to try to tell you how to get there. I've done it. Now it's your turn. Oh, wait a minute. I go to church with you people. I can't say that. You saw me more than one time. We aren't alone in our struggles, are we? And you see, that, that's where this grace and truth really, really comes in, in relationship. And I won't have time to go too far in that today. But grace and truth in relationship means that you will believe I'm more loving than I really am. You, you will, I will believe that you are more forgiving than you really are because I am and you are, and it's all by the grace of God and this foundation of truth. See, we're not alone in our struggle. We're going we're gonna to read a passage, uh, just a verse that, that will tell us about that struggle of someone who, who walked with Jesus who was able to reach out and, and touch him and, and, and take his hand and, and feel the warmth of that hand, uh, was able to, to see the tears that would come out of his eyes at times, and able to, to hear the laughter of this man, the rejoicing of this man, the crying of this man, all those experiences that people have with each other. This man that we're going to call or read about had those things. But we're not alone in this struggle, and we shouldn't allow our struggles to separate us. Uh, I'm going to meddle for 20 seconds, and I'll go on. We should not allow the differences that we have as followers of this Jesus, this foundation of truth that never changes, that cannot be added to, cannot be taken away, and is a process in our lives as we go forward, we should not allow that to separate us. We should not allow that to have ill feelings toward each other. I mean, I go to breakfast with Dana. I can't understand why he orders what he orders. <laughs> I don't understand that. He'd be much better served if he'd order what I'd order. 
That's funny, but that's true, isn't it? <laughs> and it's not just about breakfast. You see, Jesus had answers being that foundation. And Jesus gave them answers. And here's the good news today. The answer Jesus gave to them, those people who walked with him upon the earth, is the same answer as he gives to us today. The very same answer. The help that he gave to them to get through this thing, to endure it, to overcome it, to rise above it, is the same help that he gives us this morning. And, and here's the really good thing. We can expect to have the same successes that they had. And they had some real successes. We can expect that. Because they are just like us. I mean, they had the same weaknesses we have. But we have the same foundation that they have. Here's the good news that the truth speaks to us about. If we will do this by grace and embracing truth, you will change. I will change. I'll be more pleasant to be around if I'll follow this. You will be more pleasant to be around if you follow it. This is found in John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 4. And I like that Jesus started off this way. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, is there anybody here that has not had a troubled heart in the last 20 seconds? He, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me, Jesus said. In my Father's house are many rooms. Now, I grew up in a, a particular group of, of believers after I was saved that those rooms were all mansions. And they were all worth $100 million. And, and, and I didn't have to do anything. My grass was always green. It was trimmed just right. There were no leaves falling in my yard. But it means a lot more than that, I believe. In my Father's house are many Many, many experiences, many joys, many things to receive. Oh, there may be mansions. It just won't, the gold won't mean as much to us there because there's someone there more precious than gold. Lord, you are, you can tell my age now, more precious than silver. You're more costly than diamonds. Now, New Jerusalem that I talked about briefly has all that stuff in it, has a street made out of gold, walls with all those precious stones all over it, and we're able to walk on that street, walk by those walls, maybe put our hand on it to rest, and not be impressed because of the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world and the one who is the lamp of God. We're going to get to see him, just like I see you, Joe. Just like I'll, afterwards, I, I, I want you to be nice to me, okay? And I want you to shake my hand, some of you, if you get there. And, 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 uh, and I, I want you to be kind, and you will. But you see, Jesus is going to be that. He's going to seek me out when I leave this body and get to me personally, and I will believe that he loves me more than he loves anybody else until John shows up and he does the same thing to him. Dana comes around and he said, I don't care what kind of breakfast you order. You see, my point in this is that I'm truly persuaded that this foundation of truth that, that never changes, that can never be added to or taken away, is, is someone who wants to be involved with me. One of the, I love my wife for many reasons, but one of the reasons that I love her, she wants to be involved with me. She wants to go where I go. She wants to do some things I want to do. We enjoy the same things. And these many rooms, we've got some stuff waiting on us to enjoy that our imaginations cannot even conjure up.
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me, Jesus said. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. God's not trying to show off making nice places. He's trying to show off revealing the great love He has for us. We're going to get the best that God has to give starting with His Son. I go and prepare a place. I'll come back. I'll take you to be with me. That you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place I'm going. Uh Uh-oh. Now we're going to have a little bit of a challenge. Now there are five things that I'm not going to preach on much because I let me drop pick up my watch because if I don't, who knows? Five things that I want to just comment on, read to you basically, that our truths are part of that foundation. This will never change. Remember this. The next time that you're, if you're crying and if your heart is broken and if you're, or if you're so disappointed, if you just feel like you can't take another step, remember these five things. Don't let trouble live in your heart. Don't let trouble feel at home in your life. Don't let it. The foundation is already there through Jesus Christ. You take charge of it. Don't let it. Trust in God and trust in Jesus. This truth, this foundation is taking me to a place of pleasures beyond any disappointments that I might feel in this life. And here's a good one. Jesus is the guarantee that all God intends for us can and will be ours. Jesus will go away. He did. He will come back. He will. And we will go with Him, and I'm ready by grace and be with Him forever. Now, Jesus said this to his disciples after all these wonderful things that he said to them. And in verse 4 in John 14, he says, you know the way to the place I'm going. Now, they were puzzled. We all, those that read this, they, they know that they said, well, where are you going, Lord? Where, you're going to leave us? Well, John 14, 5 says this, Thomas, and we blame Thomas for a lot of stuff, but he wasn't the only one. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going So how can we know the way to where you're going? Now, it seems to me that Thomas may be saying, I don't have directions, Jesus. My GPS isn't working right on this one. I can't bring anything up. I need more information. Tell me some more before you did. That's a big statement, Jesus. That's something I wasn't prepared to hear from you. I had other plans going on. This foundation that I'm building in my relationship with you didn't include you going away and making a statement to me that I just don't understand. Jesus, are you promise me, promising me something that's not true? Have you ever felt that way about God's? I have. I, I tried to deny it to myself. I tried to deny it to God. But I really questioned. You said all things work together for the good of those that love you, who are called according to your purpose. But uh, there's no way that this is going to work to my good. There's no way you can do anything with this. Jesus is saying, it's not direction or information, Thomas, that is needed to follow me. What is needed to follow me is relationship. You've got to have a relationship with me. You've got to know who I am. You've got to know what I've done. You've got to know what I'm doing. You've got to know that I am that foundation that you can rest on. He will not, Jesus, participate in our pity parties. I've tried to get him to come. I've sent him invitations. 
I've even tried to bribe him, promising what I'd do if he'd come. Just come, Jesus, and then I'll be what you want me to be. I'll do what you want me to do. And you know, he never showed up to one of them because he loved me too much to come. You need relationship. See, truth not only needs to begin at the beginning, it needs to start with the right person. There are some people it's really dangerous to have a relationship with them that is so strong that that is the truth. We've all heard people say about other ministers, believers, people that we had confidence in who stumbled. And I, I, they stumbled, and, and I just can't go on now. I can't go to church because of what they did. Am I the only one that's heard that? Uh, cer certainly not. You see, relationship with Jesus, we then are ready to receive the truth that changes. Because know this, if you receive Jesus as your Savior, if you repent of your sins, accept that He has forgiven you, cleansed you from every sin, not only that you did, the sins you're doing or the sins you may commit. If you receive Him on that basis, know that He's going to change you. And He's the only one that you really ought to trust to change you without question. John 14, 6 and 7 says this, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, there's a lot of stuff going out, 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 out in this world that's trying to take Jesus off that part of the foundation. Got to be another way. Don't talk about Jesus. I mean, they can talk about hell and everything that hell is, but we can't talk about Jesus and everything that heaven is. Because if we do, we're fanatic. Let's be fanatics about the truth. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, Jesus said, and he's talking to Thomas as well as others, if you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Remember John 1.1? 1, 1? Who was it in the beginning? And so Jesus is saying to Thomas and the other disciples there, you've seen the Father, you've seen the way, you've seen the truth. You're talking to the foundation that never needs to change. Well, my answer then, I'm, I'll, I'll be closing. Worship team, if you'd come. And, um, our answer may be, in three words. When I hear things like that, and I first heard that, and, 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 and I feel that, maybe your answer today is these three words. Help! 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 I want to believe it. I, I want to embrace it. I want to turn around and go this other direction. Help! Help! I know it's the truth, but I need help. Well, here's good news. Here's the answer that Jesus gave them and he gives us. We have help that comes from the Father through Jesus' name and the word he speaks to us. And in John 14, 15 and, and verse 17a, it says this, verse 15, if you love me, you will obey what I command. But I can't do it. Try. Try. If you hear God speak to you, try. Do, you, do your best and ask Him to do His best. And I will ask the Father, Jesus said, and He'll give you another counselor, advocate to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Oh, I'm not, that's what's in that box with a bow on it? A Spirit of truth? A Spirit that knows everything? That loves me more than anything? That's what's there. Here's revealed that obedience 
brings more help. And, and I, I want to go through this quickly, but John 14, 25 through 27. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, that Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. You see, if we're not careful, we will allow certain groups to say, the Holy Spirit belongs to us, and if you don't believe what we believe, you can't have the Holy Spirit. That's a lie. That's not a foundation of truth. If you have Jesus, He will give you the help of the Holy Spirit. He promised it. The Counselor, the Holy Spirit from the Father, will send him, I will send in my name, will teach you all things, remind you of everything I've said to you. And in verse 27, uh, I like this one, peace I leave with you. And we know in another place Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. I do not give to you as the world gives. And again, he says, do not let your heart be troubled. and Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to trust him. Don't be afraid to admit your failure to him. For there is no condemnation for those of us that are in Christ. See, three problems with what the world says quickly. The world gives it and takes it back. The world gives it, it's not enough. The world gives it and it doesn't work. Here's the truth. John 10, verse 9 and 10. Jesus said, I am the gate. You want to know the way? Jesus. It's Jesus. That's all. It's Jesus. Talk to Him. Seek Him. He said, I'm the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. That's not just saved from the penalty of hell, but it's saved from a lot of things we don't have time to talk about this morning. Who is saved? He'll come out and he'll go out and he'll find pasture. Now, I relate that pastor there with those many rooms that he talked about. Places of nourishment, places of enjoyment, places of new experience. And then in the 10th verse it says, there is a thief. There is a thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. And he wants to start with the truth. But he won't stop there. For if we allow him to steal the truth, he'll steal your joy. He'll steal your peace. He'll steal all that God has prepared for you in those many rooms. But he said, Don't be discouraged. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't, don't slow down. Don't change course. Because I've come that you might have life and have it in fullness. Is there a truth that is a sure foundation? One that never changes, always right, just enough, will never forsake you, will never disappoint me if you know the truth. You see, those dear people on that air, coming off that airplane and wouldn't get back on it, if they had known the truth, they'd have skipped their way down the aisle to their seat and said, Hallelujah, our pilot is a good pilot. But it was because the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. And what he does is he starts out taking away a little bit and you give him a little bit, then he'll take more. But what he's after is the truth in your life. What he's after is Jesus Christ, the Savior of all mankind, and his plan for you. Would you stand with us, please? 